magazine. You are a former dog trainer or a dog whisperer, as one likes to be. No, I'm not a dog whisperer or a dog fiddler or a dog or anything like that. Oh, what, a dog whisperer? What's the difference between a dog whisperer and a dog trainer? <laughs> oh, I, I just think dog whisperer is maybe a bit gimmicky. You know, oh, okay. I, I, I might whisper in my dog's ear occasionally, but um, to be honest with you, it's uh, usually better to speak up. <laughs> so, Ryan, let's get to the root of this. If you say that the dangerous dog act is flawed, and if you are saying that you, you can't really describe any dog as dangerous uh, because a Pomeranian can go for your ankle, mm. what what are the, the owners doing wrong? And should we be doing with this dangerous dog act if it's flawed? That, that, that's, that's the great question. The, the problem that we have is that by banning breeds, what we're actually doing is, is, is like a marketing job on them. It's a bit like I remember growing up, they started putting parental discretion advice stickers on CDs, and I thought, that's the CD I want to buy. Um, there's naughty things in there, and so that's the one that I'm interested in. Forget how good the music is, and they've done exactly the same with dogs. They've done a marketing job on them by saying the pit bull or, or whatever breed is, is wrong, They've marketed it. What we have to do is say, be honest, and say there are certain members of society who really shouldn't own any dog, regardless of breed, because they will raise a dangerous dog because they're trying to. They're attempting to do that. And so if you were able to completely wipe out every single one of the, the pit bulls or of Japanese Akitas, German Shepherds, they would manage, and I mean this sincerely, they would manage to raise a dangerous Labrador because that's what they're trying to do with their dogs. So, so now, now, I like what you say, Ryan, about we have to be honest, because I'm one of those people that I want everything to be rosy, um, <laughs> and I don't like the idea of even imagining that there's a member of society that attempts to breed a dangerous dog. Who are these people? Well, this is interesting. Now, there, there, there are two types of person. There is the person who actively wants to, to, to make their dog dangerous, and that those are the people who we, we... The thing is, we do have laws currently to, to, to stop them from doing that. But we don't need new laws to take their dogs off them. We've got to crack down on those people who are doing that. But of the five people who died, which is, of course, the most serious, most dangerous dog attacks, nearly every single one of those situations was exactly the same. It was a grandparent's dog in the grandparent's home when the dog's owner usually wasn't present. So we can't have a dangerous grandparents act. And what that tells me is that's just down to a fundamental lack of understanding about dogs. If you introduce a small child into a dog's home where the dog doesn't know the child or isn't used to the child, and then even for a moment turn your back, you can get fatalities. So the dogs that are killing people are not these so-called hoodies that are hanging out on the street corner. Those aren't the most dangerous dogs in society. They haven't killed anyone. The dogs that are killing people are in family homes that are being raised by people who are accidentally raising killer dogs. They don't mean to do it. And so, from my point of view, there's only one solution, and that's compulsory dog ownership training. Before you are allowed to get a dog, you have to prove yourself competent. I go back to where I came in with the cars. If we were to say to people, just go out and have a go at driving, don't pass any tests, don't do anything like that, we would have carnage, but that's exactly what we do with dogs. And I think unless we're prepared to say we've got it wrong, we need to take a different approach, sadly, we can expect more of the same. Ryan, how many people support you in this? I mean, I'm imagining you're writing about this in canine. Uh, yes. you're, the people who respond to this article, are they on your side or do they think you're mad? Well, it's divisive. Uh, there's nobody that kind of, that, that, that's mediocre on this issue. They either really love it or they really hate it and hate me for it. And yes. so I think there's two ways of looking at it. If you believe it's your fundamental human right to have a dog and nobody should tell you otherwise, you will never support my idea. Never. If you believe, like me, that it should be a privilege, and of course privileges are earned, to have a dog rather than a right, then you might start to, put, to support my idea. And then, of course, there's the question of, well, how do we implement it? How about the cost? Well, you see, this is one of those things where I think we managed to implement a, uh, a congestion charge.
charge scheme in London that I just think is amazing. I can't drive in and out of London without them knowing my number plate. And I'm thinking, we, imp we implemented that because we wanted to. If there's a will to do it, we can do amazing things. And so surely a national scheme that compels people to A, get a licence, B, register, and C, prove themselves competent to own a dog is worth it because of the fact that bad dog ownership is a major, major detriment to society and people die. You don't get more serious than that. So no, no, I think it's worthwhile. Steve Goody of the Blue Cross Animal Welfare Charity said the soaring number of hospital emissions could be traced back to the, I'm quoting, high number of dogs on the streets being used for the wrong sort of purposes by the wrong sort of people. Now that flies in the face of what you're saying. It does, but again, what I've looked at the hospital stats, nobody's actually um, um, qu quantifying this. People are just putting the two, two things together. They're saying, oh, lo lots of hoodies on the street with dogs and lots of people going to dog attacks. It, it is a fact that most dog attacks happen in the home. That's a fact. So are these hoodies, dogs attacking people in their home? I'm not denying there is a problem with people who are rearing dogs for the intent that isn't what the dog is for. Right. But the majority of dog attacks happen in the home and they happen to somebody who knows the dog. That's, that's the fact. Okay, let me throw this at you, Ryan. Lib Dem health spokesman Norman Lamb said, and I'm quoting, we have to tackle the culture of some individuals using dogs as a badge of honour or fashion accessory. Yeah, this is the interesting one, the so-called status dog or fashion accessory dog. I do not know how you could implement a law that stops somebody getting a dog for any number of reasons. If, if you want a fashion accessory dog or a status dog, what about the royal family? They have status dogs. Paris Hilton, Britney Spears, they've yeah, got status yeah, dogs. Yeah, we, yeah. Let's not call them that. That's, that's not fair. We, let's be honest. We're talking about young men who are part of a particular subculture at the moment that involves dogs. And it comes from America, the so-called gangster rap scene. And that is an issue that we should deal with. However, take every single one of their dogs off them, every single one of them, that wouldn't have prevented any of the five deaths that have occurred in this country. And so I think if we, if we, we can have the hype and we can have the facts, and the hype is young men with dangerous dogs. And the fact is, grandmothers whose dogs are killing children. It's very blimey, Ryan O'Mara. I mean, I might even buy your magazine after this. Let me, <laughs> let, let me throw one other thing at you. Um, it says that police have launched a criminal investigation after revealing the dog for this lovely little lad um, was an illegal breed. Now, I know you're saying there's no such thing, but what are the illegal breeds and why? Well, there are. There, there, there are. There is the dog. The dog in that case is believed to have been a pit bull type, and the key word is type. Um, so what that means is there isn't really any such thing as a straightforward pit bull. If you get a litter, a Staffordshire Terriers, which of course are perfectly legal, and one of them grows up to be a bit bigger and a bit broader in the chest than the others, he now falls foul of that law because of what he looks like. Now, as a law. That's a hell of a one to implement. If you're the police or a dog ward and, and you're walking along the street and you think, that dog looks a bit big or a bit broad in the chest, I would prefer it if they were able to say, look, you seem to me to be a dog owner who hasn't passed the test, who hasn't paid their license, you're an irresponsible owner, and here is a ticket that says you've got to go and take it. That way, I think you create a barrier for those people who just simply go out and get any dog of any type and are intent on, on not contributing to society. And of course, they give all dog owners a bad name because um, they just have, have no intention of looking after their dog and very often those are the dogs who end up in a shelter and lose their own life as a result of somebody who really shouldn't have had a dog in the first place. Brilliant to talk to you. Thank you so much, Ryan. You're welcome. Ryan O'Mara, publisher of K9, that's spelled K number nine, magazine and former dog trainer. Now, Ryan's uh, uh, hypothesis is that there's no such thing as a dangerous dog. It's